Welcome fellow anime addicts, thanks for checking out the show. I don't have much to sell you today, no Japanese snack boxes or underwear subscription services. I just want to bring to your attention the aaapodcast.com website. It's absolutely free, and not only the place to find this show, but our future episodes as well, so you'll know what shows to watch before listening. We also have a ton of past episodes, including a database of our past review scores, as well as links to the YouTube videos that contain them. If you want to get involved, we have a whole mailbag section for you to submit topics, questions, and ideas, as well as links to the absolutely free Discord where we hang out and have a grand old time. And finally, if you're so inclined, where you can support us, with our Hobby Addicts, where we talk about all the movies, video games, and non-anime television shows we watch, the After Parties, where we hang out, talk about food, and go on weird rants, and finally the Hentai Episodes, which contain things that I can't talk about right now. All this and more can be found at the aaapodcast.com website, so go check it out. Now, time for the show. You are listening to the Anime Addicts Anonymous podcast. Make your anime addiction voice at aaapodcast.com. And now, here are your anime addicts. Podcast. My name is Mason, and with me today is just a single host, and it's Caroline, and she's here, and that's all you need Hi. to know. Hi, <laughs> I'm here. I hear. I, I feel old because I was dancing, and then uh, I tried to dab, and at the same time I cracked. Like you know, when you, sometimes you do something weird, and your joint cracks, and that just made me feel even older. Like after trying to dab. Tragic. I mean, at least it's really you- great tried the dab and that means you're youthful at heart i feel old because it's october already <laughs> and i don't know how i know i don't know it's how season. i was calling my brother today just to see how he's doing and he was in the car he's like ah oh, i can't believe it this house already has some skeletons up and i was like okay he's like it's not even october yet i was like <laughs> it's october 1st I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. I know. And you, listener, I even worse. You're listening to. in the future if you're not watching live on Twitch. So you're even even older than us. So I'm sorry to say that you are on your deathbed, just like Mitz is, who currently is not with us today, our third and probably most important host. But I should say... We will survive. Most importantly, there's a little bit of a delay because we're doing this through Discord. And when he plays the music that we dance to, and you will see us on Twitch dance to, you and I are always a little bit behind because of that delay. But for once, I will be on time today. So you will be the only bad dancer. I'm kidding. I'm the worst dancer. Uh, welcome all to listen Thanks, to Nathan. a podcast. Thanks a lot. Yeah. What I'm trying to say is I have no excuses for being bad at dancing today. Uh, but we do talk <laughs> anime. That's what we're here to do, as well as make your anime addiction worse. And we do that in a variety of ways, mainly with our Twitter, our Discord, and all that kind of stuff. But today, we're going to try to do it with talking about it. Who would have thunk? A podcast about anime. God help us all. Uh, But first, before we get into all the goodness we have today, which is, I think, going to be a fun episode, you put a little poll out there. You want to tell us about that? Yes. Yes, I did. Okay, so for those who are not aware, we have our, a very special channel on our Discord called The Betting Degeneracy, where people make bets on all sorts of things, a lot of times being like what we will score a, a, a certain anime that we are reviewing. Uh, one of the popular bets is Mid Wars, where every season of anime uh, with a list of shows that in the first couple weeks of airing, have underneath an eight score on Mal, those eligible shows are ripe for the picking for betting degenerates. So you pick a show, whichever show ends up being the highest rated out of the ones picked, you win mid-wars. 
I won with Dangers in My Heart in the spring season. This uh, s- uh, summer season that we are just wrapping up for Mid Wars, I chose Reborn as a Vending Machine. Unfortunately, that was a miserable fail. I got last place. Terrible, terrible, terrible. So my penalty, because a lot of the penalties in the Betting Degenerates is donating to the podcast, since I indirectly benefit from donations to the podcast, that's not really a great penalty for me to make. So I suggested that my penalty would be to watch and review a show chosen by the Degenerates. And with nearly 37% of the vote, I will be watching the first season of Link Click. So okay, that's that's a good show. Apparently, it's a good show. So they it's not that dirty. bad of a penalty. But I was kind of interested in the other shows that might have been chosen for me as well because these shows were first suggested and I put them into a poll and people voted on them. Uh, I'll just read them off. One of them was Level One Demon Lord and One Room Hero, which is kind of a meme show on our Discord, as is Birdie Wing Season 2, <laughs> which I'm not going to lie. I kind of wanted that one to win because people will not shut up. The government about doesn't Birdie want Wing you season to know two, this, and... Caroline, but you can just also <laughs> watch these shows. I don't have time for this. I really don't. <laughs> so I have to be forced to. And I did not mind Birdie Wing Season 1, but it certainly wasn't my favorite show. But people keep on insisting insisting that season two is so fantastic and i was kind of curious to see what what is what is the whoop what is the whoop mason uh so is that, that did is not that win a young it man's got... saying the i meant what's the big whoop oh what's the more <laughs> what's commonly the used whoop? phrase i'm it, and it wasn't <laughs> i i didn't want to see it as if it was a big major thing it was just a sort of thing it was a whoop not even a big whoop uh, so that got third place behind Bang Dream, It's My Go, which got second place. Uh, that was another I one. I thought of that was going to win. That has I, such a it, strong contingent on our Discord. It did. That it, you're like, it, it, was, it was certainly giving Link Click a run for its money. Um, that got 26.3% of the vote. Uh, other suggestions was, or, or I guess it was one other suggestion, which was the fruit of Grisea? which I've never heard of before, and I think only got one or two votes. I think so. that was the trash pick that they were trying to get <laughs> for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, that, and there you have it. Well, there thank you, you all who them. voted. And if you were like, man, I wish I could have changed those results, join the Discord, and it's really just a fun time. So It really is. Uh, so, uh, at some point... I will be reviewing the first season of Link Click on this podcast. We will see when that will be. And you said this punishment was all because you thought Reborn as a Vending Machine was going to be a good popular show, and it failed miserably. I did not have that big of confidence going into it. I just did not watch any of the mid-tier shows before we had a pick for Mid-Wars, and I had no idea what to pick. So I chose the most memeable option, and sadly, it wasn't even that memeable. Well, it speaking of which, we have a review today of Reborn as a yeah. Vending Machine. I now we wander will talk the dungeon. Further about this. So we, we will, will talk investigate much more truly further. how bad, how grievance we have with this show and the penalty it inflicted upon us. But first, we have a mo- main topic of the most visually a- interesting anime out there. But we have a bit of a twist on it this time so stay tuned for all that but first let us get into our big news of the week it's time for big news of the week okay so in my opinion not a very exciting news week week but i did hear something kind of fun happening in japan In August, the local government of Japan's Aichi Prefecture announced that it would be holding a Ghibli-themed matchmaking event for singles living, studying, or working within the prefecture, and apparently it is unexpectedly popular. Aichi is uh, the home to the Studio Ghibli theme park, so it's pretty uh, appropriate that the government planned this event as an interesting way for singles to meet. During the application 
period between August 1st and September 18th, 1,175 men and 1,074 women between the ages of 20 and 39 applied for the 400 open spots in the program uh, over five times more than they expected. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Um, so those accepted to participate in the event were notified on September 21st, <clears throat> and the actual matchmaking event is scheduled for October 7th. So it hasn't happened yet. Uh, it will split the participants up into six uh, groups of six, with three men and three women in each group. Then they will go on a scavenger hunt around the prefecture, or not around the prefecture, around the uh, the Aichi Expo Memorial Park, where the Ghibli Park is located. And they have to look for specific Studio Ghibli-related public art pieces together, which sounds really fun. I I love this idea. Like, we should have more stuff like this. Because I know that in this instance, it's very specific to Ghibli fans. And obviously, it being in Japan, there's going to be a ton of them. But I need a government-sanctioned matchmaking event for just me personally and if it happens to be a ghibli theme <laughs> i'll i'll take it i'll take it so my first thought <laughs> like when seeing this is that they almost got perfectly even split between men and women applying like a thousand yeah. two hundred yeah. and a thousand one hundred like that's pretty good it really is so you know props on that account i wonder oh, if... but what's gonna happen with the uh there's like a hundred men that don't have a hundred women I mean, so, they're not going to oh, oh, have oh, oh, all these people open... participate. Right, right. I forgot. That's not the people that have been accepted. It's just the people yeah. that app applied. So they just got then a ton. They but, will... you know, that's that's a good yeah. sign. It means if you're a Ghibli fan in this area looking for love, there's other folks nearby. Now, I wonder if you come in with, a, like, a cosplay on. You know, I wonder if you're coming in for the Ghibli event. You have, like, an Ashitaka a howl mm -hmm. are they gonna pair you Kotaro. yes with someone <laughs> of the you know opposite gender the you know romantic lead in that show Maybe. that's what i want to know that would be interesting that, that would be fitting i wonder what the scavenger hunt is but yeah you know, hey good japan needs all the help they can get for <laughs> inciting love and now, this is not an area that you've been to before, right? This wasn't on your trip to Japan. So we went to the Studio Ghibli Museum, which is in Mitaka, I believe, but not to the theme park. That didn't exist yet at the time. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to say I'm going to go there just for this event, but... Oh, of course not, because it's <laughs> I don't literally think in five days, and uh, <laughs> you did not apply. <laughs> I know. You, just, you think. I could have been... No, I did not apply. So. And also, it specifically says that, like, only people that live, study, or work in the prefecture. So, it really did, like, there are so many people in Japan that would have loved to go into this. Yeah, that's a good sign. Anime yeah. for once, maybe, maybe hoping this, people find love. Maybe this is what's going to solve the birth situation, the, the low birth rate in Japan. Through the power of Ghibli matchmaking. Uh, <laughs> probably not. You, we I like your optimism. <laughs> All right, uh, what do you have? My big news is in a recent Netflix live streaming event, they uh, called Drop One or Drop Zero One. I don't know. I didn't watch it, but they unveiled a bunch of new animation lineup shows coming to their service. And there was actually a bunch based on video games. So if Mitsugi was here, he would have much stronger opinions on Capcom's representation. But we are getting a Tomb Raider, the Legend of Laura Croft anime. We are getting a Devil May Cry anime. And both of those had pretty short, brief trailers. Not really enough to go on. Uh, no announced date on either. The Tomb Raider one was kind of strange because it was a lot of a shot of her doing something and just a black screen of her, like... <sighs> panting and breathing heavily and you're like oh okay i guess that was a choice uh but we we're also getting an onimusha anime which is a bit cg looking but it actually of the three was easily my favorite looking of the bunch uh done by an awesome live action director coming out november 2nd the trailer obviously it's a show that's closer to being done so they had more to show but seemed promising some cool music 
some just great art direction and you know cinematography and i've actually got my hopes up on that one so onimusha coming out november 2nd and the other is coming out in the future so hey netflix is getting into anime video games I don't think video games are often the best source of yeah. adaptation, so I have my doubts, but they're beloved franchises, so I'm sure someone out there cares. So there you go. That was it for the, my big news. The idea of an anime Lara Croft is kind of strange to me. I don't know why. She doesn't really seem like an like kawaii anime girl i mean yeah Man. she's i guess very westernized in a lot of ways yeah. but you know i feel like it's in the same vein as their castlevanias or stuff you know it's not it's animated more than it is anime which i'm all for i just i think we're getting it with the success of cyberpunk edge runners which was good and the near anime which while delayed with production schedules i think people have enjoyed for the most part so I'm not saying it can't be done, uh, and we'll probably give all of these a shot. You know, no reason not to. I, for one, will not give any of them a shot. Perfect. That's I'm what I want to hear. I'm going to be very discriminatory. <laughs> 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 all right. Let us Let's get into our main topic for today. Yeah. So this main topic was suggested by Shoujo Jimbro. Went over to our website, aaapodcast.com, clicked on mailbags, and said, hey, do a topic about the most visually interesting anime. And I'm like, okay, you know, that's a that's a fun list to make. You know, highlight some of the better looking shows out there that do things either interestingly for better or worse, but, you know, just say, hey, you know, anime doesn't all look the same. Here's some good shows with cool, neat animation. And then Caroline in the Discord was like, <laughs> you know... We talk about these shows all the time. We, we could talk about the good animation in Tatami Galaxy, Madoka Magica, Gankutsuo, and Mononoke all day. Like, people know that. That's boring. Yeah. We should talk about the shows that maybe aren't that good, are kind of mid, maybe <laughs> still have good that animation. Are, the only, the main thing that you can say that is good about this show is the fact that it looks decent. That... That's the main feature that it has going for it. So these are what visually interesting of. shows that may not be interesting shows is how I'm <laughs> thinking about it in some my it, head. Some of it does not apply. Some of these are, you know, better shows than others. So I'm not going to say totally across the chart, all these shows are crap, but a lot of them are crap. <laughs> yeah. So if a show you like appears on this list that is very personal and subjective, you can say, well... At least they're talking good things about the visuals, hopefully. Or, so. or if you're a person that likes one of the shows that I'm going to talk about, um, you can at least have it in the back of your mind that, hmm, she said not all of them are crap, so it has to be this one. Oh, yeah. Maybe we won't say which ones are bad. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I'll definitely give you my opinion on them. But I will never claim to be the absolute opinion on anything because there's always something that, you know, people enjoy that other people just don't so well we do have a review of vending machines so that might be a bit <laughs> objective yeah yeah so i actually wanted to lead off with a couple honorable mentions first and these sure, are sure, all ovas or movies which i feel inherently can be a little more adventurous with their art style you can be more abstract when you're not having to do it for 12 or 24 episodes you know you can be a little off the wall so these are all shows that have a unique art style that are a short and i think might otherwise without these visuals not be worth checking out so i'll run through these pretty quick and then we'll get to our main list the first is cat soup this is a super surreal oddball movie it's only like 30 minutes long but it is almost entirely without dialogue it's just one weird nightmare fuel inspired scene after another and if you've seen any of it you know that it's just it's odd for the sake of oddness and it looks just as fitting uh, next up is another movie called hells this is i don't even know it feels like a weird newgrounds flash animation style of very Halloween inspired so fitting for the season it's a two hour long movie though so a bit more of your time and it just has a very similar aesthetic to Dead Leaves or Panty and Stocking kind of that 
early trigger stage. Uh, super visually interesting. I'm going to say that way too much today. I apologize. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes there's not much more you can say exactly. other than that. Uh, next up is Super Flat Monogram. This is essentially just an ad for Louis Vuitton. It's like a six minute music video thing, <laughs> but it employs this hyper 2D look to a lot of its things. It's directed by Mamoru Hosoda, who essentially took the, if you ever watched his Summer Wars movie, or not Summer Wars, yeah, Summer Wars, all the like in-game digital kind of method of showing stuff it's like imposed onto this and it just has a very distinct style of flatness that is purposely that way and it's just a cool little visual feast uh, next up is a short called elemy which is about a light post that falls in love so if you like vending machine isekai this wow might fall this might be <laughs> the thing yeah this is about a utility pole who just when the electrician comes to work on her she just feels all warm and fuzzy inside and it's kind of stop motiony, so it's kind of like Pui Pui Molkar, but it's with a light post. So there you go. And finally, uh, Fog Hill of the Five Elements. This is a Chinese series. I think there's only three episodes in the first season, but just some of the flashiest, sickest, most awesome fight scenes, choreography. Just go watch the OP. It's so legendary. It's so fluid and amazing. And the show is so boring at the same time. So if you like fight scenes that are awesome, uh, check out Fog Hill. And now we can get to our list proper. So do you want to start us off? Sure. I mean, your proper list is longer than mine. And even then, you just spouted out a ton of shows already. Um, yeah, so I have actually linked all of my, all the, all the things on my list. I have linked to YouTube videos, just kind of displaying the general animation. Some of them, some of the videos are better than others. Um, kind of ran out of time, but I don't know if it is easy or not to do. If it's possible, we could show that I on the Twitch try. stream. Let me, let me try. Okay. Okay. So the first thing on my list is... Toilet bound Hanaka Hanana <laughs> I can't say it Hanana 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 Hanako Kun <laughs> There we go Um so this show came out a couple years ago it is about a boy who's actually Hanako Kun uh, or Hanako San uh, the famous you know Japanese ghost story um who lives in a toilet and it's just based in the school with a uh, girl that, that meets him and they become friends and she and him go on supernatural adventures within the school. And it is weirdly sexual in a lot of scenes. I don't know why, but and nothing sexual happens in the show, but especially with Hanako-kun, I don't know, I feel like I'm not even saying that correctly, Hanako-kun, uh, they... I don't know, he just get, gets into, like, strange positions and kind of, like, uh, like uh, asserts himself kind of lewdly uh, on Yashiro, the main character. Uh, so it's, it's kind of strange in some ways. Honestly, I enjoyed the show for what it was. I know that there's a remake or a reboot or something coming out this season, but it's only for a few episodes. Um, and I'm not going to watch it, but if it was a second season, I probably would. Uh... And generally, it's an okay show. I think the most outstanding thing about it is just how it looks because the color palette is just so striking with a lot of reds and greens and uh, the thick line art. And it just looks it just looks a little different from everything else. And that kind of what grabbed my attention the most. It's still pretty, uh, pretty uh, uh, chibi-like, I think, is, because... Especially with the with the character designs, uh, Yashiro, the main girl character, she's frequently mentioned as having daikon legs because they just look so utterly strange, like tree trunks. Uh, so it's not the most standard looking anime, and I think that plays in its favor. And overall, it's a, I, th I thought it was a pretty good watch, and I recommend. So that was the first thing I put on my list. Nice, and I do have it playing, so... You're the best, Mason. Well, uh, let's see if I can get mine going as well. Uh, how many do you have on your list? One, I two, have three, eight. Four, I can definitely not talk about a no, couple. Of I'll them. just do. I'll just start with eight then. Okay. Because 
And if you want my bonus ones, you can go to our uh, our uh, <laughs> show notes. Do it yourself. Or you could just quickly mention them. Yeah. No, no. Yeah, it's, because it's actually, fun. one of them, one of them that you're leaving out is definitely one that I thought about too. Uh, Godzilla um, Singular Point. It was what I thought about. Okay, yeah. we'll do that one first. Godzilla Singular Point. You're gonna have to listen to me clicking on the keyboard. It's click, just, it's click just click ASMR. ASMR. <laughs> Um, but honestly, I don't have mine in any particular order. I thought about ranking them, but sometimes with these things, it, they're hard to really compare. Some of them are just different. Yeah. So once again, Twitch, you're seeing this, but if not, we will describe Godzilla Singular Point. This is, you know, there's been a lot of iterations of Godzilla in anime in a lot of different ways, but this one is... I don't even know how long we reviewed it. Probably two years ago. So it's been a hot minute. It and was, it got a yeah, little caught up like in being a little too hard sci-fi, a little obtuse in some of the mechanisms of this astral four-dimensional stuff. Uh, and I think that kind of threw people for uh, a twist. But this is done by Orange and Bones, two studios who I love. And it just had a such a neat mixing of the character art which was just had weird almost not crisp outlines like they were hard outlines but they were almost done with like a pencil so they kind of faded and came back into existence with the 3d monsters and robots that were kind of integrated into the show and it gave them sort of an alien or intentionally even more so alien appearance with like the pterodactyls and godzilla himself and it just was a Fitting the, and mix that normally wouldn't have worked well, but in this case, I think was definitely a strong point and easily the most memorable part about the show because everything else was too complex to actually memorize what was going on. <laughs> um, and the OP. The OP was great. OP was cool. And it also had, you know, this digital dog creature that was hyper animated and it was like flipping all over the screen. It was just like a Sakuga fest. So it just had a lot of different styles mashed together and it somehow kind of worked so i you know like that element of the show i like some other parts but uh you know wouldn't recommend this to be the godzilla one you check out so yeah all right um so next one on my list or did sorry since we are start, starting at 10 do you want to mention another one uh scissor seven another netflix show another chinese Cartoon, also fantastic animation cuts, super fun style, uh, just a goofy, nice, relaxing comedy show that kind of dipped in season three, but season four was back to being pretty solid. So Scissor 7, fun time, or pretty goofy. I, I actually kind of meant that you start with your number eight. Oh, I yeah, I can do it. Eight, but uh, do you it can, yourself. Uh, another That's another one I was thinking of. That, you know... I would kind of liken it in a sense to encouragement of climb where I did not really connect with the emotional beats. Some of the characters were a little mm -hmm. odd and frustrating to me, but the visuals of do it yourself are no doubt phenomenal. They kind of went with a very off model look so that these characters could move hyper fluidly and just with a lot of emotion and joy and just personality and Watching the show on mute, I would probably have liked more than watching the show otherwise <laughs> for a couple different reasons. But yeah, it just was a really endearing show in its visual presentation, even if I am a big curmudgeonly stinker and didn't like the writing too much that accompanied it. Yeah. Yeah, I remember like definitely when we were talking about it not being very favorable to the show. I mean, overall, I think I liked it the most out of the three of us, but even then I wasn't like totally huge on it. But looking back on the show, I do remember it just looking so charming. And I remember that first. And then the fact that some of the characters were a little annoying. And It's a show you wanted to really love. Work. And it just, I don't know. No, I mean, no, but I'd say, I'd say it as in a good thing. Uh, the fact that the visuals managed to make its mark, even though the writing and the some of the character choices were not um, my favorite. And the OP is just so darn cute. I it's mean, so look good. at that. <laughs> it's so good. <gasps> nothing beats nothing beats a good anime OP dance in the middle of it. It's just yeah, it has it has some good points, but uh, I'd say that 
the animation was definitely one of them or just how the animation style how it looked i don't know the difference between all these different terminologies okay um next one on my list is a show that i fought so hard i fought so hard to love this darn show uh because it looked good and i remember having it on my impressions list and i was really doing my best to pass it and i did not it because of the problems it presented but it looked so nice. It was Joran, the Princess of Snow and Blood. And it was an original anime uh, about a woman. And I can't remember what the time period of Japan was. Uh, but she has, like, these supernatural abilities. Like, she's part of a clan. They have, like, blue blood. And they can transform themselves using, like, a bird familiar. And it changes, like, uh, like she breathes, like, this blue smoke. And when it, she does that, it... Uh, it makes whatever part of her face it's wearing look like uh, part of a, like, you can see her skull on the inside. And the main character, like, the character design, beautiful. I love this woman. She's gorgeous. She's my waifu. It, it was just down to visuals. Um, and, yeah, honestly, I enjoyed the show for that. But by the end of it, it was just not a great, not a great show. Um, a lot of not so great writing choices. And a lot of it did not make any sense. Uh, and I think I gave it like six or something like that out of ten. because, And I it was very much. Yeah, how much of that, that was I because was, of the visuals? <laughs> I was just I, like, I was just in, visually enthralled. And that's the only reason why I even finished it, to be honest. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, if you want to just, you know, see what I'm talking about, I recommend looking it up, but seeing it from start to end is probably not the best choice. Excellent. excellent. There you have it. Yeah, I watched one? one episode of this one and I was like, uh, I think I'm good. You know, I feel like a lot of this is based on my opinion. Uh, things that I thought looked great probably don't look that amazing to others. <laughs> Well, a show doesn't always need to look good to be interesting. And this one, I think, looks good for what it's trying to do. But it would not work for many shows. And that is The Soul Taker. So this is uh, Akiyuki Shinbo, one of my favorite directors. Uh, known mostly for kind of being the leading man of Studio Shaft. Who's done Monogatari and a bunch of other stuff. And he's just very emblematic of what that studio represents. This is a early 2000s, super dark, gritty, edgy story about the soul taker, this, you know, creature of the night. And there is just an oppressive amount of shadows and just darkness in the show. It Every character is has almost their entire body just cloaked in blackness. And it just is gothic. It is, I don't know, very... Uh, explaining visuals is hard sometimes, but it's it just, it's, it's, it's got too much going on in its story. It's kind of a nightmare. It's also just boring, but the visual designs of the monsters and how they choose to represent them is pretty fun and unique. And just, if you ever give it a shot, just pay attention to the shadows and darkness and how it's used and contrasted to so many other shows. And I think that's where the value of this lies is just in those aspects. So not a good show. It's old. No one talks about it anymore, but it exists. <laughs> uh, somebody's a big Soul Taker fan in the chat. Oh, though. boy. Captain Avatar. I'm sorry. He was, he, he was very excited. I Yeah, I mean, the visuals are good. I <laughs> There you go. <laughs> so, um, yeah. All right. So it's also the like. The next one on yeah. my list. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no. You got it. Go ahead. Nope. They're, they're, we're, we're just, gonna keep that a secret now i felt like it was a longer series than what it was it's one of those ones where you're like oh this is feels like it's 50 episodes long and you're like no it's just 13 but it just it felt like it dragged <laughs> that extra episode really <laughs> yeah um so the next one on my list uh is kaiba so i watched kaiba as part of anime club i remember hearing it as you know a fairly um classic show and i think one of the main draws to kaiba is the fact that it kind of looks like astro boy a little bit 
Like, just the character designs. It's very uh, round. Like, a lot of roundness in how the characters look. Overall, I wasn't huge on Kaiba. I did finish it. It's a rarity, but I do finish Ugh, some anime clubs. It pains clubs me places. so much. This show is so good. It, I, it, it just kind of fell apart for me. You know, I think I liked it at first, but there wasn't enough to really keep going with it, um, to, to what, the, what my thoughts were. But, yeah, I, it was a, I thought it was a, I don't think the animation was, like, that incredible. I think it didn't really do a ton, but it just looked like something that was going to be good, but just wasn't for me. <laughs> Sorry, Mason. <laughs> It's okay. I'm gonna get you back so hard. I'm gonna. I'm gonna make you pay for this. Am are you gonna pummel pummel something I love? Yeah. Don't worry, Mason. I don't have that high of standards. It's okay. I know some of the things I like are shit. No, I think this is not just you. I think this is most people enjoyed this show, and this is really great. Pretender. I remember a lot of people. A lot. Of, oh, oh, oh! I thought we we're still talking about Kaiba. Oh no! I thought you had moved on. Are you done with Kaiba? I don't know, but, like, what's the general consensus on Kaiba? Because some people in Anime Club really didn't like Kaiba. Oh, so Kaiba's just... I mean, if you're a Yuasa fan, you gotta represent your boy. And he's just... Yeah. This is one of his early ones, and it's awesome. It's so good. It's just... It looks so cute and cuddly and cartoonish and for kids. It's, and it t tells such a not. dark story in ways. And just has so many themes of forgiveness and maturity that you just don't expect. So... Mm. Uh, sorry, I spoiled Go ahead myself. With your next one. <laughs> uh, great, pre great pretender. I did not like this show. It looks so <gasps> neat. All the colors, all the pastels, just the way they texture everything from the ceiling to the floors to the characters' outfits. There just is a snappiness, and just Studio Wit knows how to make good looking shows. And this is one of them, no doubt. I just, some of the arcs really didn't connect with me. Some of the characters really bugged me. And I wanted, similar to Do It Yourself, I see the show and I'm like, I like what I'm seeing. And then just something about it did not connect in the story, in the dialogue, and it just irritated me. Like, because the visuals were so good and the writing didn't live up to it, I felt even more distraught. So, like, if the visuals were bad, I probably wouldn't hate the show as much, but I feel like they squandered... Well, other eyes would have been that's a masterpiece. Same feeling. Same feeling. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, I I think if most people ask me, do you recommend Great Pretender? I would say yes. I just didn't enjoy it. And that hurts me to say it, but it it's awesome. It's a fun show. Great soundtrack. Great visuals. It just is snazzy and fitting, but man, man, I wanted more. So I don't know. I'm just upset about it. But yeah, there you go. Mm. All right. Um, well, my next one, I won't spend too much time on this because we did talk about it fairly recently, and that would be Maho Shoujo Magical Destroyers. That's a... So, another... <laughs> I completely forgot another about show. this show already. Already. It's and that what, is kind of weeks? how it is. It's one of those shows. It's been two or three weeks since we last watched slash reviewed it. Um, and it's just one of those shows that only lives for the moment it's on. It, once it turns off, you forget about it. Honestly, I don't know if I'll remember much of this show in a year. Um, but you, I think one of the only things that I fairly enjoyed about this show is that it had a cool color palette. It looked it looked older than it is. Uh, it's not like fairly, I keep on saying fairly. I think that's the word of the podcast for me today. I think it looks um, older than it is and not like everything else that has come out this season or in seasons past. Uh, it's a strange show in a lot of different ways. Uh, and you can hear all those ways from our review, but especially with the opening, I thought the opening looked cool AF. It was and so they neat. really, they, they, yeah, they really put in all of what I thought the animation, what I liked about 
visually in the show. They put it in the OP, at least in the first 60 seconds. And then it kind of went to shit in the last 30 seconds for me personally. But those were interesting nonetheless. Um, it was memorable. It was interesting. It was not visually pleasing. Mm, not I think that's pleasing. the point. The ED also was pretty rad. I know it's not. Yeah, the ED was pretty good too. I know it's not the point, but still, I can but not like the first, like or the last portion of the opening. Uh, yeah, I it just it 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 looked cool. It had some cool ideas in how to present itself, but not much other than that. All right, I gotta talk about a show Return. that is, I will probably, you can, if you're watching on Twitch, you will see an entire episode of it by the time I'm done talking with it. And that is <laughs> the famed Inferno Cop. Uh, you can also include Ninja Slayer into this list, but this is early trigger. This is just brilliant this is surreal kind of like um cat soup but as you can see it's all very south parkian episode not episode style of animation where they just have cardboard cutouts that they move across the screen and when they zoom in it just gets oh really blurry God. because there's no oh we got to put captions on so people can read what's going on uh, and this tiny screen. It's like a slideshow presentation. It's, it's a slideshow presentation with cheesy effects and just explosions that are just CG over stuff. Uh, or like green screened over. And the look of the show is iconic and memorable. And it is just truly a landmark of what good writing and comedic timing gets you. Because uh, it carries the show completely... It's just, I'm, I'm just stalling for time as this, we're halfway through with the episode. Um, but yeah. How, how is the Inferno Cops Inferno still going underwater? Because right now he's underwater, but the flames the are flames still- The flames of justice- Are still flaming. Burn brightly. <laughs> um, but we're coming up on easily one of the funniest jokes in all of anime, which I'm going to explain to you, podcaster, which is where he shoots a bullet at the enemy- and the enemy is immune to bullets and reflects it back at Inferno Cop, at which point Inferno Cop says, I am also immune to bullets and reflects it back at the enemy, at which point the enemy <laughs> explodes and dies. Why? Why does it, why does it suddenly why, work? Why did it work the, the second time? Do not ask such questions. <laughs> Inferno Cop's power of justice compels he to bow to his majesty. <laughs> and that was the entire episode. As you can see. It's just is it, a landmark. Is it really an ability of his to be bulletproof, or is it just for the joke it's that he is suddenly joke. bulletproof? He needed it to be. So this is a 13-episode ONA. <laughs> Each episode is three minutes long. And I, I I, mean, I did just spoil the best episode of that show for you, which is episode two. But yeah, if you haven't checked it out, you need to at least watch one episode so you can understand what Trigger is capable of. And yeah. That's all I have. <laughs> is is this a good like watch party kind of show? Mm. Maybe. Or is it not even? I don't know. I think it, like maybe a couple episodes, but I think you could do better. Like it's mm, not a good okay. show. Okay. <laughs> this is why it's on my it's list. It's not. It's not um, a Garcy's wing style. No, it's not, it's not that, that legendary. Intense. But it is very memeable. By the way. The next one on the most interesting shows is Garzy's Way. <laughs> it is fairly interesting looking. I didn't actually put it on my list. Uh, I was just saying it as a joke, but I think it could have its place on this list. It's not good looking, but it certainly is interesting. Um, but the actual next one on my list is Tokyo Ghoul, which gets a lot of shit. You know, people say this is angst. This is crap. This isn't high art. The manga is, certainly. And it is angsty as hell. And I'm not going to say that it is top tier shonen, but it does look pretty cool. Uh, again, with the colors, like there's a, there's a simple way to get to my heart with animation and art styles. And it is a, uh, an interesting color palette and thick lines. And here we have both with a bunch of reds and purples in this one fight scene in particular. 
Toka, she's my B. I love Toka. She's awesome. And also Kirishima, like the villain in this uh, fight scene that we are currently playing, he ends up being such a freaking awesome character in the like at least uh, once you get through the entire story. Um, but back to the animation. Uh, I think the opening is also fairly indicative of the of what people like about it visually. Um, but I, I don't know if it's fair to always base things on the uh, openings of shows because they do end up being a little more stylized than the actual anime. Uh, but it is, it, I think both of them sh- kind of showcase what is probably the best part about watching the first season of Tokyo Ghoul. Do not watch under any circumstances. Do not watch Route A, except for the ending song, which uh, is the best part of it. Uh, maybe watch the, uh, uh, Tokyo Ghoul Re because it does get back into source material, but by that point you probably want to understand what's happening, which leads you to the conclusion that you just have to read the manga, if anything, and then maybe watch some of the anime. Uh, first season, I've always kind of enjoyed. So, and, but I also have not seen it since I first watched it, so that could have changed. Yeah, who it knows if it holds up. It still look nice. It does still look nice. And there you have it. My next show, I believe we watched in our Discord's anime club. And another fitting show for the spooky season, which is Holic or XXX Holic, if you're one of those folks. This is notoriously an adaptation of Clamp, a manga group who have done a ton, ton, ton of popular shows. Um, but if you've ever seen Code Geass, Cardcaptor Sakura, Blood Sea, Chobits, it's all them. But they are known, especially with this adaptation of Holic, with some very, uh, long-limbed individuals. (laughs) They have a, just a certain style of anatomy, as you can see our boy walking across the screen here, looking 20 feet tall. And it's endearing. I... You know, there's, some... <laughs> there's one specific screenshot from the show where it just accentuates the long legs even more. It's like between, uh, oh, I forget the characters' names, but like the main guy and the girl he has a crush on, and both of them look like monstrosities next to each other. <laughs> Hima Wari or whatever her, her name was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I no, I just I the just went to legs. YouTube, went to episode one and just started it like halfway through and. Yeah, there's, it's just a look of things, but also just the way the environments look, the way that the uh, main protagonist's like wizardly lady kind of like looks with her hair and just her room. It's just a unique take on the supernatural, the occult, and all the still kind of a zany slapstick comedy showcase. And yeah, it just has that early 2000s, mid 2000s appeal to it. <laughs> and <laughs> they show the legs again. I can't help They're but just laugh. They're so long. <laughs> they just go all the way to the floor when they shouldn't. They shouldn't reach it, but they do. And, but everyone is that way. It's not like it's one oddball character. It's just all of them look that way. And you're by like, the okay, way, this I'm... is the world. By the way, I'm watching the clips through twitch so they i my reactions to these clips are uh, a little delayed yes uh, uh, yeah very much delayed that's so. fine that's fine <laughs> just so just so people know <laughs> you're watching it like one of the no no they're good people on twitch we like them it's like it's like suddenly it's like suddenly getting a joke like a minute after it's said and go yes <laughs> uh that yeah. said i did not like the show at all it was so infuriating. Yeah, I wasn't it's huge on it either. It's not my style of comedy. Not my style of just, I've said it a thousand times, you know, you got to have strong characters and everyone here kind of irked me more than they endeared me to them. So uh, yeah, it has its fans, yeah. has its defenders. Uh, I'm not one of them, but it's a neat show visually <laughs> and I appreciate it for that. It's, I'm never going to forget this show. It's, it's like another a- thing where I'm like, I reminded of the visuals before the things I didn't like about it. And it even got me thinking like, hmm, maybe I want to watch another episode of, of Holic. <laughs> but then I remember, oh yeah, I did not like Holic. 
It's like a cracked out version um, of Natsume's Book of Friends <laughs> and a less well animated version of Toilet Bound Hanako Kun, which you mentioned earlier. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's, it's the worst of both of them together. Uh, anyway, <laughs> yeah, yeah. what do you got next? Next on my list is a show that I remember doing impressions on, I think in like the first season or two that I was on the podcast. Uh, I could be wrong about that, but I don't know. It's called the Edaton Deities No Only Peace. And I looked at this show and I'm like, damn, this show looks so cool. But little did I know this show was filled with perviness and sex jokes and people getting raped and it not being a big deal in the show and big boobs and a pretty cool, cool op with boobs on full display but uh yeah the the show i could only watch two episodes of and i had to turn it off because i hated it i hated this show it was just not it, and it, i hated it because i was expecting something cool because again the color palettes the the sky is green uh for some reason and just interesting things were happening on screen i thought it looked pretty cool i can't say much more about that though cuz that's basically it and i've been saying oh that's cool for the past 10 minutes um i did not like that. that's okay uh, I, I honestly, even now, looking back on it, it didn't. Even, it doesn't even look as good as I remember it being. So there you have it. Yeah. Uh, next up is a show with a hyper, hyper, hyper. I like. I warn you, do not look up the opening because it will get stuck in your head. But this is the 2013 show Gotchaman Crowds. This is, you know, another iteration on the Gotchaman series. Uh, you don't need to know anything going into this one. And it's neat. Uh, done with original character designs by Kinako, who did Pretty Boy Detective Club and just a bunch of other Shaft shows. If you couldn't tell, big fan of how Shaft does their stuff. And this one is like a superpower, take in the real world sort of thing. And it looks pretty typical for an anime most of the time. But similar to that super flat monogram show, the... Enemies are all these very 2D cubic creatures, and when they transform into their superhero sentai you no know, outfits, it goes into a uh, tiger and bunny 3D CG look. Similar also to uh, the show we were talking about, Godzilla, Singular Point. And both of these two very different visual styles exist within this very standard anime world. And it's just a interesting take and just another way to showcase how unearthly and unworldly these creatures and powers are and it's neat i like it visually uh it doesn't really hit story-wise for me i haven't seen any other gotcha man franchises so maybe i was lost on some of the references but overall it just was a little too safe compared to visuals that were i think more daring and inventive so yeah gotcha man crowds okay show Okay, pretty good if you like Super Sentai, but that's just not my cup of tea. Mason, you have like the hair strand that's been like I know, in your it's face bothering me. The entirety it's... of this episode. You need to you need to push you can, you need to push it to the other side. But it's it, it just it may... falls we're going to give up. There we go. Problem solved. <laughs> we It just looked it. too stringy to be stylish. It just no, it was annoying him. the crap out of me, but I was like in the middle of talking. I'm like, get out of my face. <laughs> uh, thank you for giving me the chance to fix You're it. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, uh, the second to last thing on my list uh, is a show that I've actually never seen. Never watched an episode of this show, but I have seen the opening and <laughs> I have seen some clips. And I think that's enough to at least say things about it. And that would be Drifters. Um... I think, okay, so from what I understand, this is a show where a bunch of people from <clears throat> different parts of history were isekai'd into a different version. I don't know if it's the future or if it's another world or what, but they have to beat a bunch of people. Or no, isn't this like back into the past? Isn't this like, like they were brought into like feudal Japan? So like people in planes and, and, uh, 
things like that just appear in this ancient part of Japan having to defeat pe other people and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, so different that, warriors that... throughout history are, like, summoned to this plane to just fight to see who the strongest is. Oh, okay, I, I haven't okay. watched that makes this more sense. since it came out, but I have seen the show. Maybe you could talk more about it than I It's yeah. kind of it like just, it Helsing darker. mixed with like summoning heroes from the fate series but it's like goofy and funny okay. and silly like it doesn't take itself seriously and it's just kind of a fun killing show i don't know how to say it is it is it a decent watch i gave it a six out of is ten not worth which it? might have been generous like if you like just fighting and pretty slick visuals and the occasional like chibi haha -ha cutaway gag it's fine it's fun. Like, you mm -hmm. very much just watch it without, like, thinking too hard. Yeah. I see there's a lot of blood in this It's show. It's a bloody show. It's not as good as Helsing Ultimate, but very done by the same folks. So. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. It, it, like, it just looks darker. There's a lot of shadows. Again, th with the thick lines. That's how it gets me. It's a thick line. Uh, and, uh... Yeah, I wouldn't say, like, it moves amazing, but it has its moments. And they have, like, a very interesting look in their eyes, too. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. My verbal tick is back. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> let's see. My show. Let me just to get it up on the Twitch. Sorry, listeners. You got to wait. I got to find the freaking clip for this thing. Is another Halloween-type show. And that is Tweeny Witches. This is a 40... Is this Twitches, the DCOM original from Disney? I love Twitches. No. This is Tweeny Witches. <sighs> Unless it's from Disney. I don't know. This looks like it could be on Disney Channel. <laughs> this is a 40-episode show. Each episode is nine minutes long. Let me jump around to, like, a little more, like, weird stuff. This looks, like, straight out of The Nightmare Before Christmas, but all 2D animation. And it's just these trio of witches, uh, one of which just freaking, I think, can't do magic at all. I don't know. I haven't seen the show in forever. What? But they're witches, but they can't do magic. Uh, but they do get isekai back in the early two thousands okay. before it was cool. And there's just oh, I was hoping that they would be isekai into like medieval times, and they'll be treated like you know like witches, and you know have to be avoid being burned at the stake or something like that. No, that it's cool. not a hard hitting <laughs> historical thing. It's it's like she thinks magic exists, but she can't do magic, and she's taken into a world where. Maybe she can do kind of magic. I forget. It's like Little Witch Academia, but just a twisted, perverse version of it. And it's still like very for kids with the power of friendship and overcoming stuff like that. But it just has a odd, you know, twisted, goofy art style to it that just gives it a charm. It looks like everything's burnt. Everything has just been cooked a little too long. The edges are frayed. And it's a little just misshapen. And I think if you were a kid and watched this, you'd be like, ugh. Like, have weird, like, fever dream nightmares. And be like, what What was that weird show I watched? And no one knows what you're talking about. You saw Tweeny Witches mm. is what you saw. And it just, like, persists <laughs> in the back of your subconscious. So there's just something about this show that sticks with you. And uh, as sirens go off behind me. And, yeah, I don't really recommend it. It's not really <laughs> for adults. But it's, it's, it's a fine show. It does what it does. Hmm. Um, all right. Uh, okay. And yeah. All of those. It's the trio. Um, so, one on my list here is Urusei Yatsura, the recent version, because that is the only version that I've seen. So, back in like 20. I watched a few episodes of this show, and I did not pass it for the season, partially because it was going to be a longer show, and also because. I wasn't feeling it. The The comedy wasn't enough for me. But it looked so good. And that could possibly be due to the fact that it is based on an older anime. 
So it definitely has some of that older stylization to it, like the hairstyles, the outfits, the um, Lum. Lum is Lum is nice. She's so pretty, and I love her, partially because of her hair. Her hair just looks so cool, and when she uses her power, she just like lights it up, and it becomes electric, and it looks like jello when it's normally. Oh, there's her boobs. Uh, yeah, this is the part where I. He, I chose the clip where he, he tore off like her bikini top in the in the first episode. Um, honestly, I heard people say good things about the show even after I stopped watching it, which made me kind of think maybe I'll go back and watch a few more episodes when I feel like it. Uh, especially because it it is a good looking show. It moves very nice. Uh, and the aesthetics are very pleasing to the eye. Have you ever seen the original Urusei Yatsura, Mason? I watched, I don't remember, 12, 18 episodes? Maybe not even that. I tried. It's that that style of comedy of the, you know, misunderstandings of getting into shenanigans where everyone hates you, but they forgive you by the end because you're such a lovable loser. The just yeah. those kind of hijinks, kind of I ju they just irritate me to no end. And I I can't do it. I've heard it gets better later on. I've had multiple people like be like, no, 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 you just stick with it. But I can't. I just don't enjoy it. And I have seen, you know, highlights from this show. You've talked about the OP being really good. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, like that that was a good looking show. They really like dialed it into, you know, a modern version of it while still capturing the charm and buoyancy of everything. But I just, I know I'm not going to like the character, so I, I haven't followed up on it. Mm. Uh, that was your last one? It does have its looks going for it. That was my last one. Okay, I will do my last one, which isn't really oh, go one. Go ahead. I, if this wasn't a podcast and I could just show the YouTube and not say anything, I would. Uh, yeah, just Studio Go Hands. Anything they make, anything they've ever touched is just visually interesting, but bad. <laughs> and as right now I play the iconic walking up the staircase down the school ha hall of uh, the girl I like forgot her glasses with just so many forced fish eyes and weird perspectives and odd angles that just are timeless and unique and define the show but don't make up for the show being bad <laughs> and you know it's not even poorly animated from a the way that things move it's just a needlessly animated to the point that it's not very aesthetic and sometimes painful and just a choice so uh yeah i love <laughs> the fact that this whole studio exists and that they do things thinking that someone likes it and yeah so studio go hands anything they make definitely deserves to be on this list and <laughs> I, I don't have anything more to say than that so uh, let us know if there are any <laughs> shows that you are not the biggest fan of that have very memorable art styles better you know hopefully they're good and not just bad like the ones we're making fun of but <laughs> yeah, you know, shows ex can no, succeed in all something. sorts of ways. I think there is something to be said for the shows that have something going for it visually and nothing else. And it's funny because uh, Mitsugi does say it a lot, like, what's the point of the show if it, doesn't, if, it, if it only looks good and people only like the show because it looks good. And yeah, to a certain point, like, not, you can't, there are people that really hype up the show just because it looks pretty. But I don't think there's anything wrong with enjoying a show just because it does. Because, I mean, it's animation. We should be happy about how good it looks. Yeah, we should value and it. That is my opinion. Oh, well, we there should you value go. It, even if it is just shit, no. <laughs> um, okay, let's head into our in show weekly trivia question. What phrases does the main character from Reborn as the Venetian, I now wander the dungeon? Seems to mean yes and no. What are his can't phrases he uses? 
and we will give you the answer after the news break. This is the news break for episode 697. We're going to talk some manga, some anime, and some movies, and we'll do it in that order. First up, the creator of Knights of Sidonia, Blame, and kind of the Great Snow Sea, Tsutomu Nihei, will be launching a new manga in October. Kodansha's Shonen Serious Magazine revealed that Nihei will launch a new magazine titled Tower Dungeon, with a 94-page first chapter in the magazine's October 26th issue. The story is set to be a hack-and-slash fantasy set in a world where a necromancer has just killed the king and kidnapped the princess, taking refuge in the Tower of the Dragon. The royal guard has attempted to assault the tower and rescue the princess, but have been thwarted. And now a certain farmer arrives at the battlefield to dig a hole for the casualties. Nihei definitely puts out some interesting work, so I'll be sure to check it out when it drops later this month. Next, the staff, studio, title, visual, and a 2024 premiere have all been revealed for the new Kinikumen anime in 2024. Titled Kinikumen Perfect Origin Arc, after the 2011 revival manga arc of the same name, which itself was made when the creators resumed their original Kinikumen wrestling manga as a free web manga. The creators went back to their first 1979 storyline and continued from where they left off in 1987. This anime commemorates the 40th anniversary of the original anime, which premiered back in April of 1983. As someone who never got into this retro series, even when it was brought to the US under the term muscle, it might be fun to check out for some strong meatheads and see kind of one of the originators of the genre. And finally, High Dive announced that it will be screening the Tunnel to Summer, the Exit of Goodbyes in theaters in the US on November 3rd, as well as a world premiere English dub at New York Comic Con. Tickets go on sale October 10th. This tells the story of the mysterious Yurashima Tunnel, one that legends say once you enter, you can get whatever you want, but at a steep price. Two students will team up to investigate the tunnel and get what they desire. Well, that will do it for today's news break. Hope you enjoyed listening to it, and if not, hope you enjoyed skipping it, because now it's time to get back to the show. And we're back to the podcast following that subpar news break. Hey, I'm not missing you. What do you expect from me? <laughs> uh, we last left you with an in-show trivia question, which was, what phrases do the main character, or does the main character from Reborn as a vending machine, I now wander the dungeon, say to mean yes and no? The answers for hello, or the answers for yes are hello there, or welcome, which is Irashaimase, or for no, he says too bad, or zanen. 
And that would drive me nuts if you could only say those <laughs> couple phrases. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. They, they try to add more. Uh, like, to his language, I so will say you might win a free item or something like that. But I still don't know what that means in terms of. I think it's just him saying, in the sense, like, there's more to it, you know, keep on. Oh. So, that's part of the the, the appeal of the show, but uh, let's see. Well, how are we doing on time? <laughs> how are we doing on time? 110. Let's, let's do a super quick unexplored pictures. And, uh, yeah. Good. Then I can restart Discord. Get your popcorn ready. Good. It's Here time for said. unexplored so pictures with ahead. Mason. I'll be back. That's right. While Caroline fixes her thing, we're doing an impromptu unexplored pictures, the segment where I talk about movies that you might not have heard of and let you know if I think it's worth your time or not. Today's movie is The House of the Lost on the Cape, a.k.a. Misaki no Mayoiga, a.k.a. the best anime with Mayoiga in the title, because Mayoiga is a different show. Uh, this is the story of two girls. One is a 17-year-old runaway from home. The other is an 8-year-old who is left mute after a traumatic accident that resulted in the death of her parents. Uh, both of which these are taken in, these characters are taken in by an elderly lady who live at the end of this old-fashioned house at the end of a cape that's the title of the movie and this is based on a japanese novel written by sachiko kashiwaba who also wrote the wonderland movie i discussed forever ago it's done by david production from 2021 and it is 100 minutes long this is just a nice heartwarming found family story from chores to sharing meals the acts of kindness that goes into being a family is presented in a very methodical way as the two girls learn to live with this elderly grandmother and it just gives everything this peaceful energy as they sweep the floors and repair you know pottery and stuff like that and it just has this invigorating stillness to the movie where you just watch them do these daily chores and you're like yeah yeah this is nice because it doesn't force a plot or dialogue down your throat. It gives all these scenes time to breathe, which is nice. And breathing, time, food, and kindness is kind of exactly the medicine that these two ne kids need to heal emotionally from their traumatic situations, from, you know, different car accidents or earthquakes or all sorts of other natural disasters that are kind of befalling them and the town they're fleeing to. It's just everyone kind of needs to heal from the them the people in the town and you the viewer it kind of just is a good healing experience and that healing is also made a little bit easier by the fact that their house is kind of semi-magical it kind of repairs itself sometimes where holes that develop in it are mended the next day when no one actually fixes it as well as odd visitors such as kappa and other sorts of mystical creatures that are there to help uh, the town recover from its incidents and Really, it's a simple story of these girls dealing with adjusting to their new lives. But, you know, it doesn't go that well the whole time. You kind of get these dr deadly, dreadful, sinister forces invading the town. But they're kind of just ethereal beings. It's kind of like the latest Makoto Shinkai movie where it's just this undefined <laughs> blob of badness that descends upon the town. And you're like, well, I don't know what that is exactly, but we need to get rid of it. And so they kind of set out to do it with the help of their new magical friends. And it's it's a fine show. It's really well directed, uh, courtesy of Shinya Kawatsura, who did like Nanan Biori, Tanaka Kun is Always Listless, and Kokoro Connect. So it's solid there. It's got a solid script. It loses itself a bit. It's a little too long for its own good. And it feels very much like a good budget Ghibli experience. If you've seen Spirited Away, if you've seen Totoro and are just needing something to scratch a similar itch, the House of the Lost on the Cape will probably do that. The visuals are pretty simple, has some weird CG flowers, but the highlight is definitely the stories of the past that the grandmother tells, which are animated 
Once again, fading to the th theme of our main topic in the super interesting, sketchy, chaotic way where it's just a wall of noise as these stories unfold out of the ether. And that's definitely the highlight of this film for sure. It's not a must watch, but it's a decent enough film to save for a rainy day if you want something that's just kind of calm and peaceful. So The House of the Lost on the Cape, it's a movie that exists and it's all right. And let's get to mailbags. All right. It's time for an almighty anime mailbag. Anime. 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 M -m -m mailbag. Bag, 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 bag. As it turns out, my internet issues will not cease because I couldn't even dance to that oh, on no. the beat because it started skipping. Oh, no. Well, we can hear you fine now, at least. You're no longer Robo um, Caroline. So as long as long as I sound OK, I honestly can't tell you why this is happening all of a sudden. If people have noticed in the past, I don't know, month or so, there is I, my problems with my Internet has been ceaseless and I don't know why it started up like this. Anyway, so if you want to submit a mailbag, you can do so at aaapodcast.com and click on the mailbag button. You can send us all sorts of questions they might end up being a mailbag or they might end up being a topic just like we did today and uh we got our mailbag here from captain psycho they say when did you start listening to the aaa podcast or podcasts in general for myths who has been your favorite host and who has imp impacted you uh, the most as a podcaster so this was something that we were going to do last week. So we have already kind of typed up our answers, including Mitsugi, uh, who is not here today. But uh, he had responded with, "I started to listening. To, I started listening to podcasts around 2008. Talk radio, such as ESPN Radio, is a big influence in my desire to start a podcast. One of my earliest anime podcasts I've listened to was Gundam at M A or Gundam at." M A H Q. Uh, Mason, what what's your answer? I started listening to the AAA podcast. I think it was back in 2015. I'm not really sure. Whenever the Cram era was going strong is when I, I think first got in the door. So it's been. I mean, I guess I technically don't listen to the podcast anymore, but also I kind of listen to it more than ever. So yeah, it's been about eight years. Yeah, sometimes I'll listen back to one of our recent episodes and I just laugh at myself because like, oh my God, I'm so funny. <laughs> oh, you laugh with yourself. Yeah, um, <laughs> partially a joke, but partially true. <laughs> um, so I mentioned this recently in our Weeb origin story topic, but it was around the summer of 2018 that I started listening to the podcast. My favorite host was probably Kazuo and Enzo, I think, was is a pretty close second. Uh, then again, listeners of, of that time might remember that there is a conspiracy theory that they are, in fact, the same person, even though they've been on episodes at the same time. But it's still a theory. Um, That's what they want you to think. <laughs> uh, I don't know if anyone really impacted me to answer that question, uh, because as we all know, I am one of a kind. So, <laughs> Oh, that, that's that comedy coming up yeah. again. Oh, she's so good. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm <laughs> Slay queen. Okay, okay. Uh, let's head into our deeply anticipated review of Reborn as a vending machine. I now wander the dungeon, a.k.a. Uh, vending machine isekai, because it's much easier to say. Mason, it take it away. Is. So this is a spring, summer, summer. Jeez, I can't believe we're already here. Summer 2023 show. I reviewed this on episode 688, and I was like, hmm. I don't know if it's that good. <laughs> I failed it. But the listeners, you, yes, you, they decided, it. yes, that it was unfailable and brought it back and said, no, we want you guys to review it. And Mitsugi said, I'm going to be out this week. Let's watch that vending machine, <laughs> machine show so I can skip it. So he was very wary of it. But you can watch this on Crunchyroll if you are so inclined. This is done by... The studio Gokumi, which was formed <laughs> by former Gonzo members, and they collaborate with Axes quite a lot. They work together on World's End Harem and Miss Koizumi. That's how you pronounce that? Axes? 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 It just looks like it looks like a jumble of letters. It's capital I, I A, capital X, 
lowercase s, lowercase i, capital Z. It's, wow. It's wow. pronounced some way. I'm not saying I did it right. Uh, I mean, you, could, you very well may be right. It's just I would not know where to begin. Anyway, go ahead. It's based on a light novel by the same person who does the Konosa, Konosuba spinoff light novels. And yeah, so the synopsis is pretty easy. It's just about a dude who dies in a traffic accident by a vending machine, is then reborn in another world as a vending machine. Oh, and you didn't even mention that he's a vending machine otaku. Yes, he loves vending machines. <laughs> I think he was killed by a vending machine, and now he was is, by a vending and machine. now is a vending like machine. like Final Destination style. Yeah, like it fell it off a truck. He was like behind the truck, and the vending machine was like tied to the truck, and then the vending machine was not tied to the truck. Then he was not alive, and that's how it worked. Uh, he goes wow. by the name of Boxo in the English version of the show, but they call him Hakon. So, the, you can go by either, I guess. We're going to call him Boxo, probably, just because, I don't know, it's what I read, even though I clearly heard the character say Hakan quite a lot. Yeah, I don't know if I, I, I don't know what I'm going to call the vending machine, we'll because I hear Hakan, but I, it, Hakan doesn't really roll off the tongue very well, but neither does Boxo, and I didn't really see uh, yeah. the English version, so. Uh, this is directed by Noriaki Akitaya, who did Bakuman, Orisuki, and Slow Loop, so a scatter shot of quality there, and, Slow yeah. Loop was good! And Oris, Orisuki probably wasn't, so there you go. <laughs> uh, Bakuman was pretty good, too. Uh, expectations prior to going in. Caroline, what'd you All have? right, well, I had already discussed that I thought it was going to be the meme show of the season. I thought it was going to be strong in that aspect, at least. Um, I made it my mid-wars pick based on that, but I soon found out that it unfortunately is not even strong in meme quality. There's a couple of memes to be had, but not enough. To keep it keep to keep it going and uh what what my first expectations were going to be like i kept i had those expectations originally and then people really lowered them on our, on our discord after the first couple episodes came out and i didn't watch them until we were ready for review so i was already kind of brought my brought my expectations down <laughs> yeah so my expectations were pretty low you know i saw the visuals and i'm like man this is what we're getting this is what we're being fed this is the slop that anime is getting is just <laughs> garish an anime eyes stapled on to a vending machine. And I was like, okay, we have sunk to the lowest of the low. Like, I have no expectations. All that's left is for me to be surprised by how good it is, you know? Like, the show can only be better than my expectations. So I was like, okay, come on. Let's get something here. And that's what I went into my watching of so, with that said, spoiler free, Caroline, would you recommend this show? Would you recommend Boxo and the Gang? <laughs> Unfortunately, not. Uh, it is not interesting enough to be a decent show overall, and it's not charming enough to be a good turn your brain off slice of life recommendation. In a lot of ways, I think you could say this is the. Um, like, reincarnated as a sword equivalent if it was not good. Like, reincarnated as a sword is also a ridiculous premise, and in a lot of ways has a lot of similarities with how the two main characters interact, um, how they help each other grow, but this one doesn't do it as well. So while we have sword daddy, vending machine daddy does not compete. No, I would agree with that. So... Folks can absolutely make the case that this show is good for what it is, or surprisingly not bad. Folks can genuinely enjoy the show. They can enjoy its relaxation elements. They can enjoy the earnest wholesomeness of it. Like, Boxo is a good guy for the most part. So, <laughs> I get when people say, oh, like, I enjoyed my experience with this show. I believe them, and I'm not trying to doubt them. That said, this show is overwhelmingly bad in so many facets. You know, we talked about shows earlier that we didn't like for reason A or B, but did have some strong points. This show, almost across the board, is awful. Uh, the writing, the characterizations, <laughs> the plot, 
the production values, both sound and visual, the design of the world and the characters. It is almost impressive on how it fails on so many elements simultaneously (laughs) where you're watching a scene and you're like, nothing is clicking. Like there's no value with this. And I would not recommend this show to anyone. Oh I, God, so brutal! It's, it's not good. Like even so brutal. The Sword Isekai show. I was coming in like, oh, okay, this is this is not good. And then I watched. I'm like, hey, you know, it had some compelling moments. I've I've you know I'm open. I am capable of love. I am capable of recognizing things I'm not a fan of and being like, no, there's still something. <laughs> like, not not in this case. There's very little to uh, to compliment. I'll try, but. You're not going to hear much. I at least have a couple things, but they're all relative to how not good the rest of the show (laughs) is. That's a good way of putting it. Uh, There are some things that are better than others, but even those things are not great. Yes. So with that said. the unfortunate opinion of this We are going to spoil the show. There's not much to spoil. Uh, Season two is announced and is coming. So (laughs) it does exist. And uh, let's get into it. Spoilers are coming. Oh my god. One thing I think we can start with is the main thing that could have saved this show is the characters. If you have good characters, you can make any show good. But these characters are flat as hell. They are flatter than than Boxo was. When he got hit by the vending machine. What What if we made them all just fall in love with him, though? Would that I be mean, okay? <laughs> what if we just had them honest, all have a harem? I, 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 that wasn't a major thing for me. It was okay. something I was expecting. Even if ridiculous. That not only a vending machine can be reincarnated into another world. Not only is he sentient. But that girls fall in love with him. Honestly, was I was expecting that. <laughs> and it wasn't even really all that, you know, focused on until, like, the last scene of the show. Um, it's just that you mentioned Boxo being a decent guy. He really is. He has the personality of a vending machine. He is nothing more than a voice of a guy who's generally nice and likes to help people. That's it. That is his personality. He has nothing else going for him. Uh, and then, like, and, and, and just to exemplify how bad and flat the characters are, you have Shiro and Akka. The only reason why you can remember their names is because they keep on saying each other's names. Shiro and Akka. Isn't that right, Shiro? Oh, yes, indeed, Akka. And also to punch it into your face that these are the names of the characters. We should Shiro. do that more Shiro often. has white hair. Shiro has white hair. White means Shiro in Japanese. And wouldn't you guessed it, Akka means red in Japanese. And guess what? Akka has red hair. And so they remind you what their names are, even though they are just twin. Twin characters, you, you know they're going to be twins because they are, like, they have the same personality, which is nothing, and they're next to each other all the time. They're twin NPCs, basically. That is how bad they are. Uh, they just say each other's names, and they make them unforgettable characters because their names are the only personality traits that they have. I think we should do Next that ourselves. <laughs> we should just, every point I should be like, oh, what do you think about their names being annoying, Caroline? <laughs> And then you just be like, oh, yeah, they're really annoying, Mason. I'm like, I know, Caroline. It's really quite... <laughs> and we just do that the entire show. Yeah. It would be one thing... Like, I am terrible with remembering characters' names. So sometimes I could do with them, you know, saying their names a little more often. There's not a line in this anime where they don't say each other's names. <laughs> it's. I think the it's... term NPC is a pretty apt description for... Pretty much Most. every character in this show. Yeah. There is so little actual genuine personality or characterization to things that aren't spelled out or just painfully obvious that it's just shallow in a lot of ways. Yeah. I mean, okay. So even though I can generally say the characters are not at all good, if there's any 
thing to be said to defend characters. I will say that Hulami, while her name sucks, Hulami's a bad name. She was likable. I liked her. Um, she had a bit of sass. She had something to her. Something was going on there. Uh, it wasn't much, but it was something. And Lamis does, which is <laughs> another terrible name. Uh, she She's likable too, uh, but I like Hulami better. And at least Lamis did something by the end of the show that she actually utilized her abilities in a decent way. And uh, that's... Oh, oh, another thing. Another thing about characters. Michelle, I think his name is. His social anxiety was the most amusing thing about this show. Is uh, <laughs> just having a conversation. Try, he, like, people are trying to have a conversation with him over the course of this walk they're taking. And all he can say in, in response is, Ha ha, so this ne. Ha ha, so this ne. And it, it, it didn't make me laugh. I will say that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, some of the conversation was fine. I think very rarely the comedy actually hit. Uh, you mentioned Holomy. One thing I did like about her is that we got introduced to her in concept very early on. Like episode yeah. one, Lamus is like, oh, Boxo, I want you to meet my friend Hulami. And we don't actually yeah. meet her until episode four. And we meet this person and he's like, oh, wait. Oh, I remember you. Like, that is nice. I like that so much more than compared then, that to episode six, where Boxo and Hulami are talking, and she's like, Man, these big stratum bosses never appear. It would be crazy if we found a big stratum boss boy. Exactly. And then less than seconds later, it appears. It, where it's, it's so hand holdy, where we need to set you up before this thing, right before it happens. They set, they set up so often, so often. And yeah, that that was the one exception with uh, with you and me that was done at um, least decent. Yeah, Lamis doesn't bother me, despite the fact that her hair looks like a marble. Uh, my <laughs> biggest question, and you are a woman of fashion, Caroline, at least more I am, so I than am. I. <laughs> what is up with her shorts, which have these white flaps? Like it looks like her pockets are flipped up through the waist and pouring out. All right, I'm, I'm going to look up a picture of her just to refresh my memory. I, I should pull up a picture for the Twitch. But so she's wearing short, like jean shorts, which is fine. And over the top where like the belt would go, there's these white flaps that are sticking up. Like her pockets are just inside out. And I don't understand it. It boggles me to this day. Like, I don't mind the fact that they gave her you know, like, a boot window with a belt just because they wanted to have a stupid pauldron on like i don't care why why what is this okay so i had i had a i had a similar thought process um but you only just now reminded me and i i, I love how we are focusing on her outfit here when mitsuki did go on a tirade for like 10 minutes about a blue dress last well, week someone needs but here to we complain are. about it so <laughs> there are several things you can you can complain about with her outfit here um so we got a belt around her boobs for no reason, um, it's it, honestly with her character design, with how big her boobs are, they could have done so much worse with like how a uh, you know silly the fan service could get. They really did not do anything, which I appreciate. Um, yeah, so there's no reason for a boot for a belt to be around her boobs like that for her you know arm plate that she wears constantly. Um, the the flaps that you are focusing on here, which is probably the strangest part of the outfit really do not make sense. Um, I can only guess that they are, like, just a decorative way to, to like, um, like a decorative top part of the short that dis uh, that hides the belt loops. So, I mean, I don't know. it could work, but, yeah. It's, it's um, and such then, a non-issue. Well, we it just bothers me. We have the single sock. I no, I love critiquing fashion. We have the single sock that she is wearing up to her shorts. With the uh, rips in not it. Not on the other side. With rips in it on the top. And that could be a fashion choice, if it not for the fact that it's a single sock. <laughs> She's not wearing it on the other side. And uh that that those are the main things. Like she is wearing like a uh, like a crop top, like in a southern uh cowgirl uh tie fashion 
And I think there's one episode where she takes that off and her uh, like her underneath shirt just looks so bad without it. <laughs> yeah, when they go to the springs underground or whatever it was. Yeah. I don't mind her fashion. It just wanted to bring it up. I I know. I do love critiquing these things. It is is I think we might have lost Caroline for a second. Um Frack! It's okay. You're back. You're back. <laughs> oh, good. You got you got to hear me being annoyed. <laughs> exactly. That's all we heard. I mean, I think overall, the visuals of this show are, at best, you would call them charmingly simple. Uh, accurately, you would call them lazy and just not good. Uh, there's just shots where they forget elements of clothing or facial features, especially at the end. It just takes a nosedive. Some moments look good. They fight a big, like, flame skeleton. He looked pretty yeah, awesome. Yeah, I thought the skeleton looked cool. The fire effects were pretty solid. Uh, but most of the show was just awful. They had this, like, the one eating time performance, one... this eating oh. contest, and they spend all this time talking about, we're going to have this pop soda on the thing to slow down their eating. And then they You're have this right. whole eating competition, and they don't show it at all. Nobody drinks anything. There's no drinking. It doesn't come into play at all, despite the fact we spent minutes setting up this whole thing just so the vending machine could get involved. And, like, the whole problem is the fact that they don't think that they'll have enough food, but they literally use the vending machine as an unlimited source of food. The solution was just to say, hey, Boxo, can you provide the food for this eating contest? But they, they don't ask. And yet they ask him to do similar things in the show. So that's two stupid things that happened. And, um, I you know, I did not notice that they would uh, forget things in the character designs that, that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. I did not notice that. But one thing I did notice was when Boxo was in the labyrinth. And they will uh, show him being against the wall of the labyrinth, like fairly close to the wall. But then they'll switch to a bird's eye view, and he is like three feet from the wall. And then they'll go back down, and he's against the wall again. That is the one thing I did notice. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very inconsistent, and just doesn't look good. There's very few moments that I would say. So, okay, I wanna I wanna get some good stuff out there. Mm -hmm. I do like the fact that he struggled with communication. The fact that he was a vending it's machine. It's an interesting problem. And that stopped him and impaired him. And a lot of his challenge was, how do I communicate through this? My limited functions was good. Some of the ways it was communicated was a little bit of a stretch. Whatever. It's yeah. what they had to do. I'm okay with it. Some of the solutions and problems they came about, I thought, were unique. The fact that this like bank, this coin circulation department, essentially was like, hey, we're running out of these silver coins. Where is it? Which oh, makes it's all sense. going to this like, thing. He's the, ruining the economy of exactly. this Exactly. <laughs> that's this something dungeon. I would not have thought of. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that, like, that's the that problem. They did. However, and they and they do address the problem and they say they're fixing the problem by putting the gold coins into the vending machine and taking the silver coins mm -hmm. out. But you run into the problem again when you run out of gold coins. Like there's n like you are trying to fix the problem, but you make another problem. It doesn't fix anything. Yeah. There's some sort of balancing going on. I appreciate that they addressed it. I yeah. like that the, there was a whole like need for condoms. Like I wasn't expecting that to be a problem. I wasn't expecting that either. <laughs> I wasn't expecting him to be a like toilet dispenser when they went camping. I thought that was good. And I just also learned about various vending machines, like the oxygen or the aforementioned toilet. Like there was just some good vending machine facts in there. Uh, I liked Lamis in her backstory that she didn't fish, but she just freaking punched the water so hard that the <laughs> fish like sl flew out of it. That was nice. Like there was just some solid moments in that regard. And I, yeah, those were like surprisingly like, oh, like nice. They're using the vending machine as it should be used to the best that they could. That said, a lot of the powers, a lot of the situations that happen, they had to force him into being used in just so many dumb ways. And then I actually almost appreciated when they didn't use him at all. Like for example, they go to that like science competition where they're like, oh, Boxo's my science project and we're gonna, you know, 
win the science fair with him and they encounter this magical robot that was like implanted with the soul of a human and you're like oh great how are they going to use a stupid vending machine to solve it and they don't they just don't use boxo at all and he just sits there and watches and is like well glad i didn't have to do everything i'm like yes they can solve things without using you know soda and mentos like it was pretty <laughs> it was such a stupid side story that i'm like why were we even shown that just to show that holomy is a badass just to like what did we get out of it i don't know um caroline will be back soon i'm gonna keep out ranting the side stories as a whole were very hit or miss. I like the one with the lady who was in love with the red scarf guard guy who like longed for him, but was just like, I, I love you, but I don't know how to win your uh, heart and attention. And she, he like Boxo gives her these like ingredients to reverse engineer the f dish he likes. Like that was kind of neat. I don't know why we got the side story of this dude who's just gambling his money away to win a prize to get water like why did that exist why did that take so much time what benefit did it serve was it just to show you oh vending machines have a gambling mechanic was that it was that all we got out of it why did that scene exist it wasn't touching it wasn't heartfelt it wasn't compelling it was just stupid no worries you're back it was stupid um there's like kind of Going off that too is like that moment in the uh, the spooky zone, uh, where it was like a beach one and they like wanted the juice box or something. Um, and like he like would reappear to the vending machine every night and he wouldn't say anything, but he wanted the vent he he wanted just like a kid, uh, like does. And I thought like oh they're like. Robo Caroline strikes oh. again. Oh. oh. I will be back. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. She will fix it. It's very funny, though, because she walks very funny because of her. Anyway, listeners, I'm glad it's just you and me now. We can talk about more complaints I have with the show. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know you want to hear Caroline, but this is what you're going to get. Why? Did so many things happen in the show? Why did he get the power to be invisible? And they're like, let's test how invisible you are. So you, let's put you right outside this door. And Lamis is, opens the door and immediately with her eyes closed is like, Boxo, where are you? Boxo, I can't find you. Just to prove to you, the viewer, that she cannot view Boxo with his invisibility. But if I were to tell you to do anything and find anything, you would not open the door with your eyes closed and just start yelling up. It was just so, I don't know. I don't get it. There's moments. And it was, what was it for? Just to have a juvenile boob discussion in front of him as he was invisible and can sneakily listen to them talk about it. Why did he get kidnapped by those like stupid crooks? And then they were like, oh, we're kidnapping you. You are our enemy, but we will still drink anything that you give out, beat you up, and then not mention when you repair yourself after we've been waiting for you to repair yourself. Why did that not happen? Uh, he's in jail with Hulami and they bring her bread. And he's like, oh. And she's like, oh, I don't trust what they're bringing me. And then he gives her bread. And she's like, oh, bread. This is what I've always wanted. It's like, no, you just got bread from a different source. Why is Hulami's hair a mess? And then she, he gives her stuff to wash it. And she washes it. And it looks exactly the same. If you're going to have someone fix their hair, show it looking better. Um, You know? Why did Caroline, where is she? Oh, she, I flipped spaces with her. Um, they, she mentioned about the Shiro and Akka, like going over each other's names constantly. They do the same exact thing with the, the bear cats, the little weird furry creatures where they have to explain everyone's name and then have Boxo explain everyone's name. So he understands everyone's name. Why did they put dry ice in the pit that would melt instantly? Why did they bring all these people to put dry ice in the pit? It was just Boxo and they just had needed one person to press the button. Why did that happen? Why, when they ask him for how this plan is, he's like, oh, this is a terrible idea. No, 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 you shouldn't do it. And then says out loud, yes, 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 yes. And everyone's like, oh, so we should do it. And he's like, oh, no, 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 no. Why? Wow, I'm so upset. Why are they? Oh, my goodness. The show just 
nothing made sense and nothing had to make sense. They just took it in stride, kept on moving on, and just scene after scene was just bland and bad and boring and just did not add to the world, to the story. It was just a, he is a vending machine. Yep, he still is one. Okay, let's see Caroline's back looking quite steamed, quite heated. I hate this so freaking much. I hate it. I hate it. I it's hate okay. It. It's okay. Um, so you're talking about me, right? Oh, no. I just talked about the show. I didn't say anything bad about you. Twitch, don't tell her otherwise. What were you, what, what were you saying? Mm-hmm. Oh, I just, I just went out on a tangent talking about everything bad about the show. Okay. I'll, I'll believe you. Anywho. That's friendship, people. That's friendship. Uh, yeah, so in case you guys were wondering, I did um, unplug my router. I plugged it back in again. And before anybody suggests that I do that before the podcast starts, well, it's not a problem when the podcast starts. It's only when we're in the middle of things. <laughs> now, you might have mentioned a ton of stuff that I would have great opinions on. I'm going to talk about whatever the frick I want. Or no, I'm going to continue my thought. I'm going to continue my thought. I want you to get it all before. off your chest. Don't worry if I've already said it. Just go. Okay. So what I had bef- what I was talking about before was like with the kid with the juice box and, you know, wine to- and like he repairs to the vending machine every night. And then he is killed by the member of the party when he shows up again. Uh, and you're thinking, oh, wow, that's like a good emotional moment. And it is for like one second and then it's never mentioned again it's like that was kind of silly to even include if you're not even gonna milk it uh because here he is making connections with things and beings and people and you know they're monsters so you gotta kill them uh but then they even isn't there like the the fight with the the that one stratum lord or whatever and there's more of those zombie children to feed to defeat and nobody bats an eyelash even after that whole emotional moment um i kind of thought that the last fight but like the last thing that they did i thought that was like a better fight than the other ones um especially using lamis as like within the barrier of the vending machine and using that to propel her to you know accentuate her strength in her in her punch i thought that was kind of cool yeah that was neat i like how he turned like into a cardboard or balloons or like did stuff to drastically change his weight physics wise it still wouldn't work i don't understand why holomy is holding on to like a coke bottle and instead of throwing it at the boss she throws it to boxo so boxo could expel it and throw it himself to the boss maybe (laughs) she's not very accurate but it was a little like Okay, we didn't need the the alley oop there. We could have just had just throw the bottle at the boss. But why does she have one already? She's just holding on to yeah. a can of a two liter of pop in the middle of the fight, just in case she needs it. Like why? <laughs> it's fine. It, um, it's fine. It's fine. It just also, happened because it needed to. Yeah, it really did. Like another thing that the fights really get bad with is the fact that they're in the middle of a fight with a monster that's supposedly coming right at them. And, like, it's very well shown in, like, the first fight that Lamis is involved with, with the, um, the group, uh, that she's with. It was, oh, it was with the, it was with the, the Frog King thing. Um, and they're like, oh my god, the, the king is coming! It's, It's, like, rampaging. They're in a, um... They're in a like a carriage and they're uh, coming towards the vending machine. And you know what? I could get, be getting the details wrong. I, I can't remember it that clearly. But what I'm trying to say is they make something look like it's coming right at them very quickly. And it's coming right on them. Could literally be on them at any second. And yet they find the time to have long conversations and figure out theories of ways to stop whatever being is coming at them like oh yeah and like like boxo is using like his canned language to try to describe things and and how to like defeat whatever is coming at them when literally it should have killed them already and they did this like in every single fight 
the timing yeah. of things just did not work. Um, and on the topic of can uh, Boxo's canned language, with all the crazy, you know, superpowers he gets, he gets telekinesis and barriers and all this and all the different, uh, like, forms that he can take. Are you telling me there is absolutely no option for him to upgrade his language use? Didn't he say, like, he had the option I think he had the option of like better of, of like of like telekinesis not telekinesis uh telepathy. Yeah. He mentioned telepathy. And he's just too scared to use it. And too scared. That was so stupid. I mean, I, I do hate... like the whole he might have the chance to become human again and then he would yeah. lose his yeah. unique value. He would no longer hold the value for his friends and you know, yeah, what because makes then him they'll realize so I am I imagine that they're like thinking of him like, like wow he's like an actual human in there what kind of personality does he have and then they realize that he has the personality of a vending machine he has nothing going like he would be absolutely useless they would they would just stop being around him because they're like okay you were you had more personality when you couldn't talk everyone wants to be the cool suave man behind the mask but when you realize that the man behind the mask is just a dumpy dude who likes the vending machines <laughs> you're like eh. yeah <sighs> and because and i was thinking about like that that was an interesting thought process because really he is pretty useful in this form and just knowing how he is as a character I wouldn't want to be a regular person either. <laughs> Listen, you don't have three girls smacking on you and being in the women's vending or <laughs> women's changing room if you're a dude. Yeah, yeah. But I'm not um, a pervert. You got to understand that. <laughs> like that was kind of funny. Yeah, I mean there were a couple. There were a couple moments that were decent, but yeah. Um, uh, oh, uh, th there is also another thing. Another fight. Like the fights are just so disappointing that i keep on mentioning them uh the hunters in this show don't do anything they like they really don't i don't even remember any of them like landing uh an attack other than lamis sometimes uh and yet in that labyrinth for the uh they call it the the skeleton or something like that it's just like the flaming gigantic skeleton which admittedly we did say looked pretty cool um, they bring the quote unquote heavy hitters to this fight. There's a big group of them like, whoa, even the, <laughs> the director bear is here. The bear, that's a director. Uh, he looks he's like there. Paddington with his freaking hat on. <laughs> uh, yeah. So they're all there. They're ready for a big fight. They, yeah. Um, their whole plan is to just trap it in this convenient pit that they just know is there for some reason. Uh, so they trap it in there, they fill it, question mark, rather than put a little, he, they made a puddle in this gigantic pit. It is massive. And the fact that they thought that they could fill it with water, with water bottles from the freaking vending machine. So <laughs> the fact that they thought, it, like, it would, like, they're saying like, whoa, this could, this could take days like try years decades to fill this bit well, no they do it for days and then they're like oh let's see how we're doing and they go down and they're like nope it drains at the bottom this was just a waste of time we were here for days literally days just dumping in the most paltry amount of water to no effect at the even meantime, if it didn't drain even if it didn't drain it would still be that forever. inch high water and that I they saw earlier home is like you might be wondering how is the boss of this place going to fall for his own trap? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, well, it's because <laughs> it's not expecting it. I'm like, no, <laughs> no. And it's like, so, oh, so we brought the most quality of people instead of quantity this time. I, I already ranted about this a little bit, but they're like, yeah, we get all these people. <laughs> and then they're like, okay, you press the button. Okay, now throw little pebbles at it. Oh, it's not working. Okay, but back to <laughs> oh, my no. point. Okay. So so they fill it question mark with water and then like um the like uh that ice what's it called? Well, that's before they did the dry ice. Originally yeah, the they dry just did ice. regular ice. And then ice. they fill it with dry ice. And they fill but, it with dry ice, okay. which would melt instantly too. It would. Dry ice. I don't know how it works. Evaporates. It doesn't even melt. It evaporates. 
like super quickly. Mm. So it's not like that was the answer. Okay. okay, so so far that was their whole plan. And it's all hinging on the vending machine being there. So they get there, they don't even know if they're going to run into the vending machine. So they want they are trapping it in its own convenient gigantic pit, filling it with water from the vending machine and then to finish it off, they're going to drop the vending machine on it. No. They don't drop it on it. They don't take the vending machine and aim it at his face and purposely use it as a massive weight. No. He just shows Lamis his porno mags. Lamis bats him out of the way in frustration and he just so happens to land perfectly. All according to plan. It was... Things happen in this show. And I'm not saying these things can't happen except, you know, some of the physics. But I'm not saying these things can't happen. It's just everything was so hyper convenient and stupid. Same thing when they were fighting the the frog earlier. And he was trying to show like, oh, if you put Mentos in the soda, it will explode and shoot at him. And he could not explain it until one prisoner was like, blah, blah, blah. You guys will never get away with it. And they're like, okay, shut up, nerd. And they plug his mouth with Mentos. And he's like, I'm and, thirsty. Yeah. I want water. And they're like, shut up, I nerd. And pour drink the soda. soda in there. And then he explodes. Like, all that just had to happen because someone needed to make the connection. Like, ah, That was the only way. And, and again, this is all the while they are being, like, chased by the frog monster that is literally on, supposed to be on their heels. Yep. But it's apparently a mile away. It's, it, uh, and yeah. Listen, it's, <laughs> shows don't have to make sense. Like, you can have dumb, fun shows, but this wasn't it. This just it. didn't do it right. It just, you need to be smart, no even stakes. with a dumb pun. Yeah. You need to be smart about it. Uh, it's just, it, it was too dumb to be too dumb fun. Um, and <laughs> even when I, dumb. and I mentioned, <laughs> even when I mentioned that the, uh, that the climax, at least I thought was better than the other fights, it ended so freaking abruptly. Like, Lamis managed to break the weapon of, like, the big bad. And the big One bad kick. was like, ha, I didn't think you'd manage to break that. Bye. And then he's like, come <laughs> back here if you want a rematch. Bye. And he left. But he, and, and meanwhile, he freaking murdered your, your friends. He easily and could I have. Thought, he he and literally. And, and, like, I, I actually thought that was pretty, like, oh, damn, they look like they're dead, dead. How are they going to get them back? And then they bring up the defibrillator. I'm like, oh, of course, they're not going to die. But even so, I'm like, whoa, this got, like, strangely serious. Because they're in no way, shape, or form did any of the villains give them any reason to fear for their lives. And this guy just nuked them. He, yeah. So, I'm like, okay, this this is good. This is good. It's serious. Um, And, of course, I didn't, I knew that they were going to be brought back to life somehow. I didn't think they were going to die seriously. But still, it was getting better. And then he's like, huh, see you next time. I'll get you with my arm of death weapon again. Uh, and then he left. It, it, it was like, are you serious? He, he really built up this and then he just left? And also it's the fact that like, um, when after the two get like nearly killed, Lambus is like going a little insane there. And she's like, she's like really trying her best to defeat this thing. And I'm like, yeah, go Lambus. And the box in and, and the box goes, Lamis, calm down. And she says, Okay, Boxo. <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, you need to you need to build her up. She's literally pissing her pants over there because oh you you went around the corner and said, Boo! She she's she's scared out of her mind. She needs this. She needs to be motivated to defeat this thing. And all he had to do was, was say, uh, you might win another item. And she says, You're right, <laughs> you're right, Boxo. You're right. And then she managed to defeat it. Um, so <laughs> I'm just going off the walls now. Uh, I don't know. Is there anything else? Is there anything else I can talk about? I don't know. I mean, you talked Fujimon about Fanatic a bunch of in the, things, in the sure. chat is saying this podcast fundam- fundamentally mis- un- er, undervalues camp. What are you talking about? Mitsugi is the biggest Euro camp fan out there. He loves it. <laughs> You mean hentai camp? Uh, yeah. <laughs> or no, you know, a harem, harem camp. camp. Like, yeah. That's the only one. That's the only iteration he's ever will ever see. <laughs> it's it's sadly true. 
Uh, uh, yeah. no, it could. I, it, 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 I'm laughing hard at it because it is funny to talk about in retrospect. But even when watching it, it's just not. It's just not interesting enough. It's not charming enough. It could be. It could have been better if they really played into it. If they knew what it was and they really went in on it. They could have made something so memeable and great. If you're gonna be campy. Fucking commit to the bit. You know, set up your stakes pull out your fire pit and like get down and dirty don't tiptoe around the issue but try to like kowtow to the trends of the isekai world and be like oh we got to have a hero and yeah it's funny to be like oh the three girls fell in love with the vending machine but it's as funny as me just explaining it just then like the show doesn't portray it in any proper amusing way it was just Mm. they could have done something this could have been a so bad it's good show and it was just so bad yeah (sighs) Um, Season two, you excited? Oh yeah, this is gonna be great. Uh, honestly, I really wish I knew what you said earlier because I think I could have added more of my thoughts to it, but I can't really think of anything else on my own. It was just like single uh, bits of scenes that just really didn't add any value to me. Oh wait a minute, Frigimon fanatic is saying that we are wrong, so wrong. Shake my head. Meanwhile, he thought that Eminence in Shadow was trash. <sighs> Now, I mean, him. like, and people, if people don't know, Frigimon Fanatic is a friend of the show. He is uh, a mod on our Discord. And I suggested that he watch Eminence in Shadow because I thought it was funny. And he thought it was so bad. He thinks that reincarnated as a vending machine is better than it. Listen, Are you serious, we Frigimon? We all have our lots in life. Ugh, ridiculous. Ridiculous. No wonder you're Canadian. I think... Nuclear That's Burger said it best, where it's, I feel so sad that you'll never get this lost time back from watching this show. And I think that's <laughs> the point. Like, I got nothing. There was no emotional catharsis. There was no humor. There was no charm. Like, it could have been. I didn't knock this show because, oh, it's a vending machine. That's stupid. It is. But it could it's, have been something. And it was really, it, sadly, it was more boring. forgettable. Yeah. Like and even though I am, I'm, I was crying, laughing, talking about some of the things that happened in the show, as you might have heard. But it, it isn't. I'm not crying, laughing because it was funny in the show. It's crying, laughing, talking about it. Because otherwise, I was just like looking at my phone, playing games. Like I can ever. I, and I watched this subbed, and I was still playing on my phone while watching it because I knew nothing was going to happen of consequence. <laughs> No, so, don't pull a mitts. Don't pull a mitts. <laughs> uh, I'm ready to and, score this yeah, thing. If, yeah, if let's score it. Uh, we okay, talked about it more than first? I thought I would. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you want to go first? Uh, this show is one of a kind. As in one out of five. As in, <laughs> man, this was not good. <laughs> I don't know. This one, is there any more that you want to say? No, I, no. I've said more than the show deserves. Now, for me, I'm not going to say that the show was good, but it certainly wasn't, like, hateable bad. Like, I've had hateable bad shows on this uh, to review on this podcast before, and I've given those, like, ones, mm-hmm. etc. And this show was just nothing. It was not egregious. It had its moments of being pretty okay. Uh, and it... It is funny to say, yeah, I watched a show where a guy was and reincarnated as a vending machine. Ha <laughs> ha It's funny. Um, yeah, it was just boring. And I'm going to give this show... Uh, I'm going to give it one and a half. You might win another item out of five. It's, it could have been a two, but it just didn't... If it was just a little funnier, maybe. But, yeah. Yeah. Well, such is life. Thank you all for putting up with this podcast. Thank you all for listening. Uh, hopefully... I don't even know what you got out of this podcast. We're just like the show. We're no better. We weren't charming or funny. <laughs> but we were here for you in your time of need and hopefully at least a little bit entertaining. Uh, feel free to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Discord, TikTok, wherever you want to. YouTube is a place we put stuff on YouTube. We might even have some bonus content on YouTube soon. Uh, And feel free to support us if you just, your heart really just feels guilty at the fact for getting all this content for free. You can get hentai episodes, hobby addicts, and after parties like we are going to do shortly. So stick around on Twitch if you want to see that live. 
If not, we will see you next week for a review of Bastard Season 2. Oh boy, so many good shows coming up. I'm jumping out of my seat. Uh, love iTunes reviews if you have the chance, but if not, we will just say bye and see you in the next one. See you later. Hopefully my internet is not being... But I say that, it's gonna happen. Bye, y'all.